Hi, everyone. Welcome to Science Buffs, the ultimate podcast for STEM enthusiasts. I'm Sam. And I'm Abby. And we have a little bit of a different topic today, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's my turn informing Abby. But first, what's what's new with you, Abs? Oh, nothing too much, <laughs> which we say every week. <laughs> but let me think. Um, well, so, okay. We, we know that I have a, I have a nine month old son. He just turned nine months old. And so we started watching a little bit of Bluey, like just, we were turning it on because we, you know, we've heard some good things and I will confess that I thought it was weird that like a bunch of adults had told me <laughs> that they watch Bluey like on their own. They're like, well, we kind of started watching it for a kid, but like, then we just started watching it just on our own. And then like, you were telling me that you watched Bluey, my cousin watches Bluey. And I was like, this is weird. And I was judging. Wait, hold on. I do need to preface that I don't just sit as a 28 year old and watch Bluey by myself. I thought you did. I thought you did. No, my neighbor has a daughter. And when I would go over to their house for dinner, they told me all about Bluey. So I'd watch Bluey there, but I would never go home and just watch Bluey. Okay, well, I have been doing that. Like during his nap time, I just continue watching. It is like the greatest show. I can't stress it enough. It's the greatest show that's ever happened. It's, like, so hilarious. The parents, it's all kind of about, like, pretend play. Like, the kids are always pretending. And the parents just always go along with it. And it's so funny. There's nothing, like, weird in it. It's just, like, good, wholesome fun, you know? I think they dropped a new season, too. Yeah, they dropped, I think it was, like, the second half of a season or something. There's a bunch of new episodes that dropped. We're very excited. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) We're on season two right now. So we have a ways to go. Yeah, I remember my neighbor, her daughter was even watching. She was like playing something and she goes, Do you want to watch this episode of Bluey? It makes me cry. Oh my goodness. We were both sitting on the couch crying. (laughs) Which one? Is it the postpartum one? I haven't seen that one. That would make me cry. No, this one was about Chili's dad. So Bingo's grandpa. Yeah. I'm just seeing him get old and stuff. It was really sad. Oh no. Okay. I'll be on the lookout for that one. That there's one, one where I saw a little clip. We haven't reached it yet, I don't think. But there's like a clip where the mom is reminiscing on like what it was like to have a new little baby. Oh my and goodness. how it was all kind of a mess and she felt like she was going to cry and stuff. And then like, I think it was her neighbor or a friend or something came over and said like, I just want to let you know you're doing a great job. But the way that they film it was like so that the friend is looking at the viewer so that it like it looks like they're talking to all the new moms watching Bluey. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that's so sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah. So I did that all all weekend. You know, we're, we're doing that every day. And then this weekend I went to the mall and my mom got her makeup done at like one of the makeup counters. <gasps> And we were going to go together and both do it. And it ended up taking kind of long. So we just did it on for my mom. But I ended up buying like so much skincare. That's amazing. You so really need excited. to show me what you got. Because... Yeah, it's this French brand. So we kind of got like a little bit screwed. But I think in a good way where it's actually going to work. But we were at like the Clinique counter, which is, you know, affordable. And we were like you know, there's a bunch of different brands around the counter. And this lady comes up and we're like, oh, you know, can you do our makeup? And she goes, oh, yeah, sure. Come over here. We're like, what brand are you with? And it's with this French brand that's like 200 years old. It made me think of your master's class. Wow. Because I was like, I want to know all the logistics. But they're 200 years old and they have like gold flakes and things. And the whole thing is based on bees and like having honey in the products and royal jelly and stuff. Oh, and you're a sucker for honey. (laughs) <laughs> was like oh my god well I'm gonna want this and so I bought this pack that was like 275 dollars that's crazy and okay the foundation so, that... <laughs> so they gave me a bunch of free gifts and stuff and the refills it's kind of cool because when you go it back in and say like I'm out they just refill your current can't like uh at a discount things at a steep discount see this is we're living parallel lives because okay, you're obsessed great. with bees <laughs> I went to Lush and I got a matcha face mask. Okay, great. I'm oh my gosh. You should post Same that. Thing. You should post you the a... selfie you sent me. With oh the my God. Yes. <laughs> no. Same. You get a discount if you return it. So yes, I like it because you don't have to have all these containers. You just go back in, they fill up the product again. 
and it's a discount so it's a win-win yeah but I did spend like got. almost four hundred dollars on like base products <laughs> and I was like we've been so like budgeting so much <laughs> and we're like let's get this basement done like we're gonna save all this money and then we decided to like push it out a little bit like a couple months and so we've just been spending money like crazy <laughs> that's amazing it was an impulse buy but it's gonna be good it's gonna be well good. I want to see the results so yeah well um if I start looking amazing in the next couple, few weeks here <laughs> you know. it's just, like, whoo, it's just glowing and I have like perfect makeup she also taught me some good tricks about concealer and like brightening your face and stuff oh you got really, I haven't implemented these. yet but I will I will pass it all <laughs> yes please teach me these anyway what do you do this weekend um I pretty much did nothing this weekend except clean Oh, that's so satisfying though spring cleaning I know yeah I'm trying to not spend a lot of money right now so been been cleaning and hanging out at home so nothing really new here but we're supposed to get some crazy weather here in yeah let's Colorado. talk about that because what's your so we're current, what's, the down. Current, what's the current prediction that it's showing on your apps and stuff for okay your area? so I was just talking to my boyfriend about this there's my weather app shows nothing except potential snow tomorrow. What do you mean? Like really? literally, if you look like on, on the, the iPhone app, app, yes, I see nothing except for potential snow on Thursday, fifty-five percent. Does it say how many inches? Oh my gosh! No. Wow, that is so, crazy. Oh wait, I'm looking at Henders. I don't even know where this is. Tennessee. Snow. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's a 55% chance, but the precipitation total for snow is 14 inches. Yeah, mine says 16. That's crazy. But Wednesday says it's just cloudy, but then it says the precipitation is 0.2. So other predictions have said on Wednesday in our area, 8 inches, and now it's up to like 16 inches on Tuesday or on Thursday. It's wild. And Castle yeah. Rock, they said like 12 and then 24 or something like that. Like feet and That's feet insane. of snow. Now, do you That's like awesome. the snow? Are you excited? I do. Snow? I'm a little over it as a homeowner, as a kid. And like when I didn't own a driveway, I loved it. But now that I have a driveway and I have But to now it, also you have a boyfriend. Like he does it. Yeah, he will do it. He, <laughs> he does do it. We're back to liking snow. <laughs> exactly exactly yay snow <laughs> he's gonna hear this i know i'm like ooh, like because you know we have like the driveway and then we have like the little half driveway and i'm like yeah yeah it's snowing again like have fun out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of driveway and like but your workout my house your gets workout. no my house gets no sun i know yours is so, like yeah. worse shovel wise because if you don't do it immediately it freezes into a, a sheet of ice yeah so, so best of luck through the yeah, week <laughs> it's pretty rough uh yeah so I guess when this comes out we'll know what the snow totals were yeah and we'll we'll recap next week at what the damage was but you know yeah. I never trust it until I see the snow like inch like feet of snow on the ground I don't trust it because always I feel like the weather people here are like you're gonna get two feet and then it's like an inch Mm -hmm. Do you remember, like, growing up, we would have s full snow days. They would call it at 5 a.m. And then they'd be like, the wind's changed. And it would be 60 degrees and sunny by, like, 2 p.m. Yeah. It'd be a snow day. That Colorado so, weather. I just, don't, I just don't trust any of these predictions until it happens. So we'll see. But, yeah. I am on the same page. Yeah. All right. All right. Should ready. we get into it? Let's do it. <laughs> gonna do some hints but i'm not sure that you will get them yeah sam just it's pretty niche everything she's told me she gave me a little heads up that this episode is a little different yeah Maybe not get clues so we'll see <laughs> yeah so i'll do one clue and okay. the clue is that it is associate it's a type of prize 
The lottery. No. That's a good guess, though. Dang it. <laughs> I was like, let's learn about it, how people lost their fortunes. <laughs> That's a good one. This has turned into an economic Not podcast. Not related, but it's statistics. <laughs> no. No. So this is pretty niche. It's okay. called the Ig Nobel Prize. Okay. So it's essentially... Um, a satiric prize, which is awarded annually since 1991 to celebrate 10 unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research oh, I every love year. This. I'm going to love this. <laughs> yeah. So a little history. I first learned about the Ig Nobel Prize in college. I took a technical writing class. Um, we were all required to take a technical writing class before we graduated. And we had to like look up an Ig Nobel Prize and okay. kind of write about it. I'm bummed because I don't remember which one I chose. I don't remember writing the paper, but I do remember learning about it and being like, this is a real thing. I wish you had it on your computer somewhere. I feel like you save a lot of stuff like that. I know. I don't have the same computer and oh. I didn't back up my stuff, but Dang I should have. Yeah. So... The Ig Nobel Prize, like a little history, is organized by the scientific scientific humor magazine called Annals of Improbable Research. And it's really interesting because all the awards are actually presented by Nobel Prize laureates. So real like oh, real wow. Nobel That's Prize <laughs> winners present them at Harvard every year. Wow. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, Ig Nobel Prizes are, they're real scientific research, they have real scientific backing, and to even okay. be nominated, you are required to have um, evidence that you have real research, so whether that be a published paper to, or something to, to okay. back it up. So these are real studies, these are not just made up. <laughs> um, so the way that we're going to format this episode is I went through all, let's see, it'd be 20 all 33 years of Ig Nobel Prize winnings. Oh, wow. And I picked out the ones that I thought were the best to talk about. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go through those and just kind of comment on them. Can I just say a side note really quick about like, yes. the Nobel Prize? Yes. I don't, I need to like look more at why this was, but I heard this thing that Nobel, you know, he like has this Nobel Prize now and he's like, you know, crowned as this great achievement before the prize he was apparently known as like the angel of death or the ancient agent of death or something what and so the nobel prize was to like reclaim his reputation and try to do something good i think That's he invented like some sort of bomb or like exploding device or something so people like hated him before was my impression and then he's like wait but i'm gonna create this prize <laughs> that's wild to win so yeah I guess it was like a reputation saver I'll have to, we'll have to put something in the stories about it um yeah, but I'm it was really kind of like controversial like the history of it so I'm gonna have to ask I just listened to that on a podcast but they didn't go into much detail <laughs> so that's wild I need to look that up yeah um as we go through this I do have one question and my boyfriend and I were talking about this and I have an answer but yeah. If you could do a scientific study, don't answer it now. We'll come back to it at the end of the podcast. Oh, okay. What would you try to enter for the Ig Nobel Prize? Like, what would you study? Oh, it has to be for a Nobel Prize. Like, can it the be like Ig Nobel minute? Prize. Oh, so something kind of quirky. Oh. Okay, great. Okay, I'll I'll keep that in the back of my mind. You'll kind of see a theme as we go through this. Okay, great. So, um, and then you I'm have to tell um, your boyfriend's answers as well. <laughs> yes, we we arrived at one together. Oh, I think. perfect. Even better. It was my idea, but he agreed. We okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to, the way that I'm going to format this, we're going to go backwards and, or we're going to start in 1991, the first year, and we're going to go okay. all the way up to 2023 was the latest year. Okay, perfect. And I picked the ones that I thought were the best. So, Sorry, you might have mentioned already, but how many are awarded each year? Is it-, it said 10, but okay. like I'm looking at 1991 and there's nine. Okay. The other interesting thing is that the categories aren't always consistent per year. So gotcha. I've noticed a couple years have a different category than they did. Yeah. Then. If it's like kind of a ridiculous prize, they probably are just like, well, we need a new category. for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like one year has acoustics. 
Okay, great. But like there's economics, literature, peace is pretty common because I think the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. Um, education, medicine, literature, I think I already said that. Um, physics, biology. Oh, these are more serious categories than I had imagined. Okay. Yeah, just wait though. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 1991 is the first year of the Ig Nobel Prize. And Oh, I didn't explain. Sorry, really quick. I didn't explain what ignoble means. Um, I It's a pun on the word ignoble, which means being below the normal standard of human decency or dignity. Oh, gosh. That's funny. So that's a play on that word. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm starting. So um, the first one that I chose, which I thought was really interesting, <laughs> was um, Peace was the first category, okay. and it was awarded to Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb and okay. the first champion of the Star Wars weapon system. So I think he kind of thought up what the Star Wars weapon system would be. Wow. Okay. Oh, so he got Great. he got an award for that. And a lot of these are buried in deep satire. So when I read the okay. description, you right. can kind of get it. But right. um, for um, biology, these this guy named Robert Clark Graham, they call him the selector of seeds, <laughs> one <laughs> for his pioneering development of the repository of germinal choice, which is a sperm bank that accepts donations only from Nobelians and Olympians. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. And my favorite one from 1991 was the medicine category. Okay. And this guy named Alan... Kligerman he <laughs> won it. Be excited <laughs> because for the they call him the van- yeah they call him the vanquisher of vapor and he invented Beano which is what is that an anti-gas you've never taken Beano I don't think so <laughs> it's an anti-gas over-the-counter drug that prevents low <laughs> gassiness discomfort and embarrassment it says that is too bad <laughs> okay yeah. so these are real things that they did real things that these people did and they just say like these are stupid, basically. Their their catchphrase. <laughs> their, okay, so their catchphrase for the Nobel or the Ig Nobel prizes is they are achievements that make people laugh and then think. Okay. So it's like, oh, this sounds really silly, and then you're thinking about it like, okay, this isn't like I could see where there would be scientific benefit. Okay, interesting. Okay, yeah. I get, I'm getting it. Yeah. So the prizes are intended to celebrate the unusual, honor the imaginative, and spur people's interest in science, medicine, and technology. Okay. So these are like the creative engineers that were just like too smart. Their parents like, don't waste your brain. But they're like, I want to be an actor. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Okay, great. This Um, is not me. I'm so not creative. No, you will. You'll figure out one. Okay, we'll, we'll think. So... Another one was in 1992 for chemistry. Um, Yvette Bassa won for her role in the crowning achievement of the 20th century is what they call it, which is the synthesis of blue jello. So she figured out how to make blue jello. Oh my gosh. Okay. I like her. I know it's like why was blue so much harder to make than all the other colors <laughs> I know clearly they had like other colors before <laughs> exactly exactly oh my gosh wait this reminds me have you seen blown away the glass blowing show no oh you were telling me about that okay you should watch it it's very interesting but it kind of goes along with the synthesis of blue jello because this lady was making something that was black and white at the same time it was like spiral a big spiral plate of black and white and she's like, you know, this is like the hardest thing to do is work with white and black oh, glass I'm sure. together because the heating points or like the melting points are so different that to get them to like meld together and not crack or anything like to get wow. them to, to basically work together is really hard. So maybe blue jello is that way. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe the melting <laughs> point of blue jello is insane. It's just That's a, that makes sense though. Yeah. So. All right. In 1993, for the chemistry section or chemistry award, um, a couple, so James Campbell and Gaines Campbell dedicated, they're called, they call them the dedicated deliverers of fragrance because they invented the scent strips that 
you put in magazines to sell perfumes. Those had to be invented. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, if you think about it, like it still has to smell after it's been after a long time and shipped and right put in somebody. I feel like if you open a magazine, still you may be able to still smell it. Right. And if it's oh, been around, okay, well, yeah. These are these are niche. <laughs> Yeah, they're very interesting. Um, let's see. <laughs> so psychology mm-hmm. in 1995, so the year I was born. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to butcher these names, so I'm not going to say it. But um, these three people won an award for their success in training pigeons to discriminate between the paintings of Picasso and Monet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's hilarious. Now, what is the purpose of doing that? Just what like, use would you smart? I don't know. <laughs> because they are smart, right? Well, they must if they can decipher I've such seen... art. <laughs> the only thing I know about pigeons is that they have better eyesight than humans. Like they can see. Really? Whole... Yeah, I saw a documentary about it. They can see a whole different array of colors, like a whole different part of the light spectrum. I mean... So see. confused on how we can really tell that. <laughs> is this Monet? <laughs> you know that thing where like people say, oh, what if my green is your blue? Yes. That sort of thing. I think about that too often. Me too. Me up, oh, like a lot. <laughs> me too. And I'm like, how do you know what a dog is seeing? I guess you can see the rods and cones or something. Like, how do you really know that how that's interpreted in their brain? Yeah, how the brain interprets that color. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good one, though. I like that prize. We have to see the same colors, right? Because color coordinating, I don't know, people... No, but some people are dress ugly. <laughs> Me probably being one of them. You know, like, like the colors I think go together, not good for other people. That makes sense. Yeah. And also people are colorblind, so obviously there's some variation. And I feel like if you... Can you tell if someone's colorblind just by looking at their physical eyes like I don't the know, maybe and in their eyes that's a good question because otherwise know. i don't know how you could tell if a dog is seeing 18 more colors than us you know like <laughs> how are you <laughs> what do you mean they probably just asked the pigeon how many colors i could see yeah like hold up <laughs> hold up this many fingers of how many colors you can see <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> not quite <laughs> they're like they're oh my goodness. and they can see more colors than us <laughs> oh my goodness so true all right same year 1995 I actually learned about this one with watching 60 minutes with my parents growing up so I've actually heard of this one before right so this is the nutrition category for 1995 John Martinez of J Martinez and Company in Atlanta Georgia educated the world about Lueck coffee which is the world's most expensive coffee and it's made from coffee beans ingested and excreted by the Lueck which is aka the palm civet which is a bobcat like animal native to Indonesia so it's dung coffee (laughs) my uncle went there and had it and came back and brought some back with him what was apparently it was pretty good I think it was it was, it was good I don't know if it was. Do you remember how much he paid for it? Did he tell you? A lot. Uh, I don't remember. That would be, yeah, that'd be interesting to ask. But it was like, he was texting us from there and was like, okay, this is a lot. (laughs) Yeah. But we're trying it and we're going to try it. (laughs) So, and you know what was annoying? They all got together. I think it was like maybe over Christmas. And we, like my husband and I were flying somewhere and I never got to taste it. Wow, but the, rest of the whole like, extended family did. I was so bummed. Maybe we should order some poo coffee. Yeah, we can go in. It's a business expense. Yeah. <laughs> it's a business expense. <laughs> Maybe I we should know fly when to said. Indonesia. Yes. Get it. Business expense. <laughs> business expense. I would love to know how much it is. I have no idea. We should look it up. Yeah, we will put it in stories. We'll fact check it. Yeah. Okay. So we're in 1996 now. And this is for the chemistry category. So George Gobble of Purdue University set the blistering world record time for igniting a barbecue grill in three seconds using charcoal and liquid oxygen. Wow, that is quick. That's quick. Three seconds. It's pretty good. I don't know why that's useful, but (laughs) there. It won't kill you to do it in 10. 
Yes, <laughs> that's true. But, you know. Um, in 1997, the category for peace. So I just find these ones kind of interesting. So this guy named Harold Hillman of the University of Surrey, England, wrote a love and rendered an ultimately peaceful report called the possible pain experience during execution by different methods oh my god that is a great one that's wild that seems like a not ignoble prize i feel like that would be a better prize yeah well how would he know like it would have to be a scientific understanding of anatomy to write that right like it's kind of serious because also if you're actually giving people the death penalty, I feel like that's something you'd want to know that is actually, yeah. like, really applicable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... that's why maybe it's under the peace category. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Informing people. Um, Some of these, like, favorite... I think I have a good idea for a study, and then I'm like, wait, is that too, like, I don't know if I'm getting it, really. And then now I hear one that I'm like, that's totally serious. I would put that They're on the Nobel Prize. <laughs> there's, like, there's honestly no boundaries. Okay, great. Um, okay, so this might be my favorite one. So 1997, and of course, this is not necessarily STEM. It kind of is. Um, this is an economics category. Okay. So Akihiro Yoki of Wiz Company in Chiba, Japan, and Aiki Maiti of Bandy <laughs> Company in Tokyo are considered the father and mother of Tomagachi. And they won the award for diverting millions of person hours of work into the husbandry of virtual pets. <laughs> Tomagachi. That is a great way to put it. <laughs> Probably dead. The husbandry of virtual pets. That's amazing. <laughs> Love it. Um, Isn't that okay. weird? Also, that taking care of animals is called animal husbandry. I've never heard that before. This was yeah, the first time like, I had to look it up. It's a big like homesteading term that I've been immersed in. They're like animal husbandry, you know. And I'm like, that's a like, an interesting term. Very interesting. But, yeah, I've never heard that before. All right. In 1997, we're still in 1997. They had okay. an entomology category, which I hadn't seen before. Okay. Um, so this guy named Mark Holstetter wrote a book called The Gunk on Your Car, and it identifies the insects splats that appear on automobile windows. Oh, my God. So based off of the splat it makes, you can identify which insect it was. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. Pretty great. Um... Let's okay, see. I think I have a good I think I have a good one. Okay. okay. I'm excited to hear it. Okay. It's already been done. It's from a movie, but I'm just gonna reuse. <laughs> oh, that's good. We should nominate it then. Okay, great. <laughs> There's been real study on it. Um in 19, so we we fast forward to 2000. Okay. So in 19 or sorry, in 2000, they had a public health category. Okay. And a group of people from Glasgow wrote an alarming report called The Collapse of Toilets in Glasgow. <laughs> I guess they were having issues of toilets collapsing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what their conclusion was. We need to look that up. Yeah, that would be a good abstract to read. Yeah. Um, this bad. was, I think this one was my boyfriend's favorite. Um, it's a physics one. And this guy in the Netherlands and another guy from the UK, I'm really bad at pronouncing these people's names. <laughs> Um, it's okay we can skip that on the physics category for using magnets to levitate a frog wow okay <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah that one's pretty interesting in 2001 the medicine category um peter bars of mcgill university wrote an impactful report <laughs> called injuries due to falling coconuts oh i heard it's high yeah, I think it is high. Like, I think more people crazy. die of coconuts or are injured of coconuts than, like, many other causes. Yeah, so be careful walking under a coconut tree. That's <laughs> crazy. Which is a palm tree. I think it's so. I was, just, I, was just gonna, I was just gonna say, I think that's a palm tree. <laughs> oh my god. A coconut tree. <laughs> careful when you see those coconut trees. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. Um, I liked this one. So in 2002, um, this Arne Lake the, from the University of Munich demonstrated that beer froth obeys the mathematical law of exponential decay. Wow, that's a fun study. 
Sounds interesting. He probably has to drink it all after he was done. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, In what okay. world would we need to know that? <laughs> no world would we need to know that. <laughs> anyway. um, in 2003, the engineering category... John Paul Stopp and Edward A. Murphy and George Nicholas jointly birthed in 1949 Murphy's Law. The basic engineering principle that if there are two or more ways to do something and one of those ways can result in a ca catastrophe, someone will do it. Or in other words, if anything can go wrong, it will. Okay. How many, literally in, your, in the workplace, I'm curious, how many times have you heard of Murphy's Law? How many times has it been brought up at work? Uh, probably like once every few months. I've yeah, heard it quite frequently. Like a hundred. Like it, it is always brought up in engineering, I feel like. It's, yeah. And, and also, I, like, I, I don't Google think it I one ever... day, like, what does that even mean? Yes. <laughs> I had to look up the actual definition. Yeah. It's like always brought up by like an older engineer. And they're like, oh, God, Murphy's Law. And I was like, what? What is this? <laughs> Murphy's Law. It's as That's common so as the funny that that back. is where it comes from. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's good. Okay, so I really liked this one. I put a star next to it, okay. and this is from 2004, and it's P. It's the peace category, and this guy from Japan won it for inventing karaoke, thereby providing an entirely new way for people to learn how to tolerate each other. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Too good. Okay. I heard on a podcast actually just like yesterday, they were talking about things that they're convinced that other people are just pretending to enjoy. Like no one actually likes it, but everyone just pretends collectively to enjoy it. And one of them was karaoke. Cause they're like the whole time you're doing karaoke, you are simply waiting for your own turn to go. And you so true every other moment. <laughs> and I That's was like, so that true. is so true. I'm never just like sitting at karaoke, just yeah this this one's awesome <laughs> that is so true like someone always thinks it's still funny to do tequila you know and then you get to the second verse of sweet caroline you're like this is dumb <laughs> and you're but, just waiting for your your own turn and everyone has such different music tastes so yeah you know someone will do a category and you don't know the song and you can't vibe with it and yeah. then you're just waiting for your turn and they don't vibe with your song have you done karaoke where you like actually go up and sing Yes. When I was in Japan, I think we did karaoke almost every night That's for 10 hilarious. days. Did you, have you, did, did you do it before then at all? Because remember the place hadn't. in Boulder, the good karaoke place, the Irish Is pub? There? Yeah. And I went like many times and I was always like, I'm going to do it tonight. And I would have like a pint and then be like, nope. Like it See, was usually the opposite. It's the opposite it was the opposite. Usually people are like, I'm not doing it. Also, the line was just always too long. And by the time I had, like, drank my beer, I was like, I feel bloated. I feel too full. And I want to leave. <laughs> and they <laughs> never got to my point in the list. So, Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That is definitely my experience with karaoke. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that enjoyable. So, okay, moving on to... There's so many good ones. 2006. This is the acoustics category I mentioned. Okay. And um, these people did a study on conducting or they conducted experiments to learn why people dislike the sound of fingernails on a chalkboard. That's a good one. Yeah. We should read so that one too. We will. It, their report is called Psychoacoustics of a Chilling Sound. Mm. Okay. I think you've heard of the next one, which is the peace category. And this guy named Howard Stapleton of Wales invented an electromechanical teenager repel repellent. <laughs> it's a device <laughs> that makes an annoying high pitched noise designed to be audible to only this, teenagers. This is the craziest thing. And this was like so huge in high school. Yes. <laughs> People just play this and all the teachers. Or do you remember the kids that kid would make like it their ringtone? Oh, no, that's terrible. I don't like him. So, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's weird. But I don't think anyone did that. But people would just play it randomly in math class. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh. And then the yeah. teacher would just be not Chant, a clue what was going on. Life. Yeah. Um, that same year, the chemistry prize was from Japan. And 
this Japanese scientist developed a way to extract vanilla. Well, it's called vanillin, which is vanilla fragrance and flavoring from cow dung. <laughs> oh. Not okay. sure how useful that is, because I don't know if I really want that. But yeah, like, is anyone using that today? Yeah, I don't know. These are the questions. <laughs> There's also a lot of cow ones, because moving forward to 2009, the Veterinary <laughs> Medicine Prize said that... <laughs> specific so from the uk showed that cows who have names give more milk than the cows that are nameless oh well, they're cared for <laughs> <laughs> they're like someone cares about me here's more See, milk. That, that is the study i would do that's that's, that's along the same lines yeah um i liked this one it was a public health prize from 2010 and it was a study that determined that microbes tend to cling to bearded scientists. So they oh cling on the beards of scientists. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Not good. Um, the medicine prize from 2010 was because these people discovered, these scientists discovered that the symptoms of asthma can be treated with a roller coaster ride. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you're hyperventilating, just put you on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're so often having an asthma attack in the park. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. But we are going to Disney in a month, so I will know that if, so if I do have an asthma attack, I'll get on the Incredicoaster. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Clear it um, up. In 2011, there was a psychology prize for trying to understand why in everyday life people sigh. I heard sign oh. really stress. Huh. I wonder, I wonder why. Okay. So I'm speeding through a few more because they just get wilder and wilder. Okay. And this one, a lot of people have heard of. It's a biology prize from 2014. I actually saw this on an Instagram reel re recently. So you've probably heard it. Okay. But the biology prize was um, for carefully documenting that when dogs defecate and urinate, they prefer to align their body axis with the Earth's north south geomagnetic field lines. Yes. That's an amazing one. Which is crazy. Like, that's the one that everyone's heard about because it's just so out there. Yeah, I've definitely heard of that. Yeah. Um, and also it's true. For sure, it's true. It's definitely true. I Not that I have any way to prove it, but <laughs> I'm making it up. Um, Let's see. Another one is the Medicine Prize from 2015 was for experiments to study the biomedical benefits or biomedical consequences of intense kissing. <laughs> wow. Very interesting. Sexy. <laughs> um, That's funny. Like you imagine doing, you have so many topics to study and they're like, yes, yeah, there's so many. Let's do intense kissing. <laughs> People are yeah, like, let's you freak. just do that one. <laughs> In 2016, the psychology prize was for asking a thousand liars how often they lie and for deciding whether or not to believe the answers. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Useful. Uh, there's so many good ones. It's insane. Um, the anthropology prize from 2018 was for collecting evidence in a zoo that chimpanzees Imitate humans about as often and about as well as humans imitate chimpanzees. <laughs> <laughs> like, how would you know that? And who's writing their image? You're going to say as each other. The fact that <laughs> who's imitating, like, oh, yeah, that one looks like a human. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> the fact that they're imitating us, like, we imitate them. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> that got me good this one made me really think I thought this was actually a really interesting one it was an economics prize from 2019 okay. and it was for testing which country's paper money is best at transmitting dangerous bacteria so what's the dirtiest money oh that's a good one yeah yeah money oh, I wrote is down so this disgusting. one for Abby okay. this one's for Abby Okay, 2020, the medicine prize. So ninth, controversial. <laughs> ninth Bullock and Damien Denny's and Arnold Van Loon 
right? Won the prize for diagnosing a long unrecognized medical condition, which is called misophonia, which is yes. the distress at hearing other people making chewing sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's your worst that's your biggest pet peeve and it's a real thing I guess yeah the problem is like now it's just so I feel like it's one of those that are so overdone because now it's like cool to have I feel like I was the OG also I used to get so much crap for that as a kid (laughs) I just remember when you would and it's one of those things you can't tell people because then they do it just to make you mad yeah also now I can control it and just like like you know breathe through it I'll be okay but like as a kid, I would be like, like, yeah, please stop chewing. Please and stop. Chewing. Then people would do it extra. So, <laughs> oh my god. Um, this one is for you too. It's the 2021 Biology Prize, and it, it was one for analyzing variations in purring, chirping, chattering, trilling, tweedling, murmuring, meowing, moaning, squeaking, hissing, yelling, howling, growling, and other modes of cat-human communication. <laughs> Let's go. That's okay. I don't know if we've talked about this, probably not on the podcast at least, but there was this whole TikTok or like Instagram reel where if you went like to your cat, (laughs) it meant come here. (laughs) Like all these people were like, (laughs) my cousin and I were just like yelling at Mick at one point, like, (laughs) that's so funny. (laughs) See, you could, that could be your report. That'd be a great one. one. That'd be a great one. That is so funny. Um, this is one of my favorite ones from 20. So we're in 2023, the current year. So, Mm. or the last year, I guess the latest prizes. So the public health prize went to Seong Min Park for inventing the Stanford toilet, which is a device that uses a variety of technologies, including a urinalysis, dipstick, test strip, a computer vision system for defecation analysis, not going to say what the other ones are and telecommunications link. (laughs) But it's not crazy because they have like litter boxes like that, right? Where they can test your cat's pee. Do they? Yeah, I I read that based off a certain color in the litter, it'll wow. tell you if something's wrong with your cat. So wow. they have humans now too. That's scary. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. Like your butt's um, looking a little weird today. <laughs> <I'm just> like, yeah. <laughs> All right, there's two more um, for this year that I picked out. So there's the Mechanical Engineering Prize. This one was totally off the wall, probably like the weirdest one, but it's for reanimating dead spiders to use them as mechanical gripping tools because I guess their legs are like, can grip up to three times their body weight and they use them to like grip things. I don't know. It's the Mechanical Engineering Prize. No, thanks. (laughs) And the most off the wall one from this year was the chemistry and geology prize, which is for explaining why many scientists like to lick rocks. Oh, freaks. <laughs> <Just kidding>. freaks. <laughs> no judgment, but weird. I'm just like licking your rock. <laughs> We're like, that's so weird. <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay. So what's the one that you came up with? Yeah. Okay. So those are all the ignoble prizes. Those are great. I, I like there's, those. There's literally... I don't know, hundred. So go read them. Those some of them, are, those are some of them. I didn't feel comfortable talking about on a podcast, but um, we have a reputation. Mine was, yeah, mine was studying. I would like to do a study. You know how they say a watch pot never boils. I want to yes. see if there's a statistical significance for if you watch a pot if it takes longer to boil. <laughs> that is so funny. I want to see if I can find. Or, yeah, if your phone rings like if it takes longer yes. to ring, like a, a phone never rings that's a good one yeah okay come up with one have you heard that like salt makes it boil faster was that your impression yeah you salt to... okay we looked it up and apparently it takes longer really and all these years i've been like see like jason you're not making this pot boil quick enough because you have to add salt and then we looked it up and he's like you are wrong <laughs> you're incorrect (laughs) um okay so the first one i thought of which is actually from a movie is from the other guys where he makes the face back app have you i don't think i've seen this no oh my gosh so basically he's like 
<laughs> like, if I, if you take a picture of anyone's back of the head, I can tell you what their face look like. <laughs> and so, basically in the movie, like he talks about this and everyone's like, that's kind of ridiculous. But then at the very end of the movie, they're like, and they used his face back app to like catch the criminal. <laughs> That's a great one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that would be Oh, I have seen this. This is with Will Ferrell and Yes, oh, and Mark name? Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yes. Yes, I have. I remember cool. that now. It's so funny. Don't watch the ones with the new scenes in it though, because they're extremely inappropriate and really disgusting. <laughs> like they added these scenes after they aired it on TV and they're like over the top. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, don't watch really that. Bad. Um anyway. So Please then the out. other one is this is i think already a study but they've done studies about like how music how if you're listening to very negative music or like very hardcore yeah i guess negative music your life will be worse essentially and so they've done this thing where like structurally they study st the structure of water after playing water different genres of music so they'll play like or plants, same thing. They'll like study the growth of plants after playing the plants jazz music for 24 hours, like or like constantly, versus like hip hop that's talking about like death and drugs and stuff. And I think that the results were that the classical music had better growth and that the water that's was so structured differently depending on the music. That's a fantastic one. I didn't so, see that one in here. And I feel well, like that would be fantastic. That would maybe be good because I think it like it says, you know, you're you'll be more positive and uplifted if you don't obviously listen to bad music, but it's like biological structurally. I'll just try to find that study. I heard about it when I was like eleven and it's convinced me to have a positive mindset and to listen to uplifting music for the last like 14 years or whatever, to 18 years. And I don't even know if it's true. <laughs> But that would be mine. That's amazing. Well, my dog is barking. I'm sorry, everyone. I couldn't even hear the first one when you looked. So I think somehow Zoom cut out. But but that is the Ig Nobel Prize. Drop a comment on what you would submit or want to study. Yes. And... That was a really good one. I loved that. Yeah, yeah we're going to post some good ideas. But yeah, be sure to subscribe, follow us, share with your friends, and we'll see you guys all next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.